Good morning, everyone. So our Torah portion this morning is called uh, Bayelech, and in English, and he went, and he went, and he went. And this is uh, speaking about Moses' his last day. He's about to, uh, it's his birthday. Today is, uh, on this Torah portion is eight or seven. It was Moses' his birthday. It's the day that he was born, and it will be the day that he will also die. So he will die on this day. Of course, there's another Torah portion next week. Um, but the, this is almost like his farewell. And what's interesting about this Torah portion is uh, this is the Torah portion in between Rosh Hashanah and, the, uh, and Yom Kippur, which is, uh, they, they call it in, in English, is the Days of Awe. This is the, uh, uh, this is the Days of Awe, meaning it's... Uh, one of the holiest days. Rosh Hashanah, as we said last time, is Judgment Day. But uh, Rosh in, in Yom Kippur is the is when the day when God executes His judgment. It's either mm -hmm. He's going to execute His judgment, or He's going to uh, uh, restore us and forgive us. Amen. And we're believing in uh, in uh, in God. Forgiving us through the blood of Yeshua, Amen. And atone, uh, uh, Yeshua, our atoning, um, the one who atones for our sins, Amen. So, if you are ready, so uh, if you are new to the channel, like I said, we are a Messianic congregation. Um, we are uh, based in uh, Parma, and if you are, uh, you are able, you are uh, to join us via Zoom. Our Zoom details are there. So um, go to the next slide. So so here in chapter thirty one, and this is the shortest chapter in the shortest Torah portion, and uh, they call this uh, Torah portion they call this Shabbat Shuva, because it's the, the Torah portion where we are reminded to return. This is the this is a Torah portion of repentance. So Moses does his farewell, uh, chapter thirty one verse one to fourteen. Chapter 60 to 21, um, Moses uh, unfortunately tells them, you know, you, you were, you were uh, unfaithful, you disobeyed God while I was here. So he already prophesied, or he already knew that when Moses finally leaves, they will also become faithless. And he's, re and he's reminding them and warning them. And uh, Jesse, and it uh, talks about the renewing of the covenant. Every seven years, it's like they're doing a marriage vow. Uh, of course, we, 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 repentance is not uh, any set day or any set time, although there are set days when we can formally come, like Yom Kippur. Next week, it's Yom Kippur. It's a formal time when we, when we, uh, we ask God for, 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 for his mercy. We do confession. But every day, say that every day. Every day is a time for repentance. Every day we are born again. Amen. Amen. So, uh, and then, uh, and finally, in the, the last remaining chapter, Moses writes the song, the song. And uh, so that uh, uh, it's all, it's uh, in, in Jewish writing, it's like a love song. Amen. Because our relationship with God is, is on love. And that's why if you go to, uh, Messianic synagogues or in, uh, in Jewish synagogues, when they read the Torah, it's like they're singing. It's like they're singing, like what we just declared. They sought a Torah, Hashem, Hamoshe, right? So we, they're almost, they're singing the Torah. Why? Because the Torah is a love song. Amen. Say that the Torah, the word of God, it is love song to us. Amen. Amen. So uh, 10 days of awe, uh, Rosh Hashanah is considered judgment day, as I said, go next slide, Jesse. Rosh Hashanah is considered judgment day, and Yom Kippur is the day when the sentence is handed down, is reminding us about our daily teshuva, returning to Hashem. This is, there is, there is still time, say that there's still time. Between now and Wednesday, amen, there's still time, there's still time. Uh, everything, every decree 
if there's a decree against you to this, uh, the enemy put a decree against you this year, God said, there's still time to reverse it. We're going to reverse every curse, every spell, every attack that the enemy has placed in your life. We are going to reverse that in your short faith. Amen? Amen. This is the faith. Amen. So, um, go to the next slide. So, so we, we're, we're, we're talking about the shofar. Uh, last time, there's many, many meetings of the shofar. And um, the shuva is uh, repentance. It's not supposed to depress us. Amen? So, you know, when, when people sin, yes, it's, um, you know, we're, we're sorry, but the whole idea of returning to God is not to beat ourselves, not to say that we are so low, although yes, we probably feel that, you know, we, we know better. Sometimes when we, when we sin, when we disobey God, we feel like dirt, amen? But God is saying, you know, the, the attitude of the shuva is not supposed to make us sad, make us depressed to the point that we don't feel that we have any hope. Like, you know, like uh, when, when uh, a good example is probably when Judas realized that when he betrayed the Messiah and he saw that they were going to crucify him, they thought they're just going to to uh, to imprison him, or he he, he didn't he didn't even he didn't cross his mind to the to the extent of what the Sanhedrin was going to do to the Messiah. So he felt so much guilt that what he did, what does the scripture say that he hung himself right. Mm -hmm. So uh, what what the, what God is saying, you know, you know, yes, there, there there is repentance, there's genuine repentance. We're sorry, but God is saying, don't go too too low that you think. That there is no more hope for you. Say that there's there's always hope. Say there's always hope. That is the message that God wants to convey to each and every one of us. Yes, we sin. Yes, we've fallen. But they said, you know, the, the, the righteous fell seven times. But God said, but he rises up. We need to rise up. So what, what really the focus of Teshuvah, of returning to God, the focus is not so much, yes, we can go back to the sin. When we're strong enough, we can face the sin. But God is saying, you know, my focus is what are you going to do now? It's the future. God is saying, okay, yes, yesterday is gone. You failed, but I want you to, to rise. Say that to, I want you to rise up because there's, a, there's another tomorrow. Okay? So there, there is, God is looking at the present and the future. Amen. I, I still yeah. God does not judge us by what we have done in the past. Amen? Amen? Our future is not dependent on our background. Say that, our background, our background. where we came from, we came from. Our, education, our education, our lack of education. Are you still here? Yes. God doesn't care. What God cares about is your life today. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen? And what are you going to do for him? in the future. Amen? Yeah. Look, God looks at, that's why in Rosh Hashanah God look, looks at us not on, you know, the state that we're in. Okay, we're in a muddy clay. Amen? We are, we, are, we are all muddied. We are all soiled by sin. But God said, you know, when I wash you, all that dirt, I can see the potential. Yes. You're actually a diamond. Are you still here? Yes. Yes. You're a diamond in the rough. Amen? Yes. God sees what he can do when you surrender his life to you. Amen? Yes. To him. So the idea of the shuva is that we are not bound by your past. You are able to escape it. You are able to be different. What you are today is not what you are yesterday or what you will be tomorrow. Amen? Yes. So we talk of the shuva. We, we we take it seriously. Yes, yes. We 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 do introspection. We go reflection. Okay. Yes. How did it happen? Why did it happen? How can I avoid it happening? But the whole emotion should be joy. Why? Because God is giving you a second chance. Amen. 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 God is believing in you. God said, you know, I believe in you. Um, you know, and uh, yes. 
when you're strong enough, you can go back and you can revisit why these things happen. So, so uh, if you go back, yes, see, so the shofar, I'm supposed to say the shofar, as many, as we said, there are, uh, I, I told you last Rosh Hashanah, there are more than eight or nine different sounds uh, or symbolism of the shofar, right? Yeah. And today I'm going to share some more. The shofar is, you know, when the shofar is blown, as uh, Brother Denzel beautifully blown this morning, as the shofar is blown, shofar could also signify freedom. Say that freedom. 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 Because remember, uh, the command to blow the shofar is on Yom Kippur during a jubilee. So when, when Yom Kippur happens, remember when the Messiah, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He started his fast in Elul. And then on Yom Kippur, uh, uh, he, he ended his fast. And what happened? He went into the synagogue and he read from the book of Isaiah. What did he say? He said, he said that the, 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 the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has given me. Um, uh, anyway, he, he authority. authority. He, he declared a jubilee. He said, I declare the jubilee. Yeah. Why? Because the jubilee can only be declared on Yom Kippur. No other feast can the jubilee be declared. So you only de so so the, the the whole idea of the shofar. Remember, in Yom Kippur they blow the shofar as well. Yeah. In Yom Teruah, uh, in Rosh Hashanah we, we blow the shofar. But in 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 Yom Kippur there is an actual requirement to blow the shofar. Yeah. Why? Because like I said, the shofar uh, in Yom Kippur is the day they, the, 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 every 50 years, they declare the jubilee year. The jubilee, jubilee year, when it's declared, it signifies freedom for the slaves. Amen? Yeah. Freedom for the slaves. The land is reverted back to the owner. The same way with the Shemitah, the slaves are free, but the land does not turn back to the owner. It's only on Jubilee. So the, there's freedom. So the concept of the blowing of the shofar reminds us that we are to be free. Because there's going to be teshuba presupposes freedom. Say that repentance follows freedom. Okay, clear? Many think that their lives many believe that their lives are predetermined. You know, they are predestined to do this. Yeah. No, but God said, no, you are not uh, your, your DNA, who your parents are. And like I said earlier, what your, your education is, is not predetermined. In other words, just because this, just because that, that does not dictate who you will be. Amen? Are you still here? Amen. So, what, uh, what the, the, the shofar is reminding us, the, the shofar, when you hear the sound of the shofar, it's telling you, you are free. Say that I'm free. I'm Meaning free. I'm free from, from the restrictions. Say that the restrictions. Restriction. I'm free from the bondage that the world has put upon me. I'm free from the chains, from the, what do you call that? Maybe there's a term, they call it maybe from... Shackles. Shackles, or there's a term that you are, you are, um, what do you call that term? There's a, there's, a, there's a term that they use now where, where they marginalize you. Amen. I still hear you. You say, oh, you, you come from this class, you're only supposed to be in this class, right? Racism. Racism or, or class system, whatever it is. But, but God is saying, you know, the, 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 when you hear the sound of the shofar, it reminds you that God has set us free, but that God did not set us free so we can do whatever we want. Are you still here? Peace. Huh? Peace. <laughs> yeah. God did not, God did not, God did not set us free so we can just do whatever we want. Whatever feels right in our own eyes. Are you still here? Yes. The same way when you have children, when, when your children are young, you just you just don't. Tell them, okay, kids, from now on, whatever you like to do, you can do it. So you, you let them run around the house. You let them destroy whatever. You let them eat whatever. Is that how you raise your children? No. No, 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 right? No, say no. no. So the same way when God gave us freedom, 
He, yeah. he brought us from, he took us out of the world, Egypt. And where did he take us? He didn't take us to the promised land. Where did he take us? He took us to a longer route and brought us to Mount Sinai. Why? Why Mount Sinai? Again, the blowing of the shofar reminds us of why the giving of the Torah. God gave us instruction here. If you want to live, you want to follow me. You want to live a life, life. You, you want life in your life? Then here's the way. Say that here's the way. Liberty. Liberty. So, so he set us free so we can say that we God is giving us a choice. Say that he gave us a choice. That's why we, we said last, last week in uh, Rosh Hashanah, we said that God, before man was created, he was a ruler. He ruled the animal kingdom. He ruled the universe. In other words, the animals, they don't have free will. Are you still here? The angels, God created them for a purpose. They don't have free will. But when man was created, when, when man was created, man had the potential. Man was, was given the free will. So therefore, God said, now I can be a melech. Say that God can be a melech. Why? Because now there's a person, there's a nation, there's a potential person that will turn into a nation or people or race or nation that will choose. Say that I will choose. To worship him. Amen. To follow him. And that's who we are. So say that that's who we are. That's who you are. We are here because we chose. Say that we chose. We chose. Follow God. Follow God. Amen. Make him our king. Amen. Amen. We come to Shabbat service this morning, as Brother Edmund said. You know, he always felt that why am I not attending Shabbat? So now he's he's following God. Why? Because he loves God. And God said, "Okay, I'm gonna open a door for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead you and guide you. Yes. You know, that's that. That's all our journey. If you talk about people that are in in this movement, you ask them, how, what, how did you know about this thing? You know, God led me to 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 know about His Shabbat. God led me to know about His feast. Amen. Amen. And today we're celebrating it. Why? Amen. Because we love God. Amen. Amen. So so here." The, 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 the challenge with us, even the children of Israel, remember they were slaves all their lives. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, God was going to take them to a land flowing milk and honey, but in their minds, they always wanted to go back to the world. Amen? Are you still here? It's a challenge. It's not easy. That it's not easy. This journey, this journey of faith cannot happen if God is not with us. That's why it, the, what uh, brother the, uh, Oscar read, you know, God, you know, he said, I will with you, I'll be with you. I will never fail you. I'm going to read that later on, but, but you, you need to understand that, you know, when we, when we say we're going to follow God, yes. it's, it's, it's hard. Why? Because, because tradition is against us. Our families, some, some, uh, our family members are we're going to be against us. Why? Because they haven't, they haven't been there. They, they, they have not seen or they, not, they have not experienced. They not have heard what God has said in your life. Yes, that's true. But we, we need to hang on there. Because we are the ones that will carry them. Amen? We are the ones that will be the light to, the, to, to your family, to the nations. And let's not allow the, the, the light to be quenched in our lives. Amen? Are you still here? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, the shofar is reminding us, yes, it's a call by God. It's freedom, but God gave us purpose. Say that we have a purpose. Purpose, he yes. He didn't just set us free so we can wander around, do whatever we want. Are you still here? Yes. That's not how God raises godly children. That's not how you raise your children, that you just allow them to do whatever they want. Do they? Do you? Do, do you? No, you don't. You discipline them. You train them. You show them. You teach them, amen? And God is what, that is what the word of God is doing to us. He's training us, he's teaching us, he's discipling us. Yes. But as we, we in our, within ourselves, we can be uh, the light of the nations. We have a purpose on why he called us. There's no excuse for us, you know? He's called us, we are his, we are his children today, amen? 
And yeah. there's no turning back. Say that there's no turning back. <laughs> no turning back. Amen. 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 There's a there's a parable. Go to the next slide. Remember the Shuvah return, the returning to God. There's a there's a there's a Jewish parable. There was a king, and I, I tried to uh, illustrate of uh, he built a, a, a he constructed a tower with a thousand stories. See that thousand stories. Thousand stories. And he said that anyone who can scale the, 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 the tower in one day will get to marry my daughter. So he said. So the people look at the tower, it's so high that it's impossible. And then one guy said, you know what? I'm gonna try. So he tries to climb the tower. So then, you know, he climbs five stories. Wow, 99, 995 stories left. He got 10, a little bit more. He, he was uh, breathing heavily. He finally reached the 15th story. 20th story, and then finally he collapsed on the 50th story. He just collapsed. He just do it anymore. And all of a sudden, see that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, elevator opened and carried him all the way to the top. Are you still here? So, so what is what is this story telling us? There's a beautiful metaphor about the idea of the shuba of repentance. So on one hand, man has to do his own effort. Are you still here? We have to do our own. We have to come to God. We have to change our life. Amen? And God said, your, your efforts will only take you so far. But it doesn't mean that you're not supposed to take that journey. Yes, we, we all take that journey. We are that, that person who, when, when everybody said, no, you know, it's impossible. No, he, he, he tried. And up to the extent that he is able on the 50th floor, that's the extent that he, he finally collapsed. That's it. You know, I can't I can do more. I cannot do more. And God said, that's enough effort. And God gave him the elevator to take him all the way to the top. And that's what, that's the message of God to you and I today about the Shuba. It's important for us to, to, to make the effort. Amen? You know, changing, you know, changing our lifestyle, like, like, uh, like for us in, in our family, we were we were so sports oriented. You know, Saturday was the sports day, but we had to change all of that. Amen. Are you still here? We had to make choices. What is more important in, in in our lives? But but the moment you honor God, you know, step by step, it, it, it's it's a long. It's you know, it's it's not overnight, and, and I don't want you to do this overnight. And a lot of you, it's step by step. You know, change your 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 food, your your, your diet slowly. You know, but it, it it takes your effort, your step. God is saying, okay, uh, do what you can. You know, it's it's a gradual process, and then God is going to say, I'm going to take it to the end. Amen. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. So, in Deuter in the next slide, De Deuteronomy chapter thirty one, Moses is about to die, and uh, he's. Uh, his uh, his final words, you know, when a person is dying, you know, the, normally what he what he's going to say is very important. Moses spoke to Israel. He said, "I'm a hundred years, hundred twenty years old. I can no more go out and come in." And so, so here there's a commentary. What does that mean? What does what does Moses say? I can no longer come in. I can never. I can no longer go out and come in. So. In the Art Scroll Kumash, page 1094, it talks about Moses knew that this was the last day of his life. So in, in Jewish writing, a righteous person, a person who, who's been following God, they said that he or she will know when it's time. Are you still here? Yeah. <laughs> they will know when, they, you know, when God is going to call them. They're going to die. They know. They know it. And most people that are dying... Most people, they, 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 you know, maybe the, in the last few minutes of their life, they, they realize this is it. Why? Because God is giving us, the giving the person the chance to still repent. Amen? Are you still here? Yes. But for a righteous person, they know. They know. Maybe months, 
maybe days, maybe weeks ahead. Why? Because God is preparing them. Mm -hmm. the who must, uh, it says there that Moses knew when that it, his time is up. Mm -hmm. Not because his body was failing. Are you still here? In yeah. fact, it says there that Moses' eyesight, his strength was, did not wane. He was still very strong. He said, I can, I, I can no, but he said, I can no more go out and come in. Moses did not mean that he was too old for, uh, to do the work of God, but he's saying that, that the Torah is no longer um, vibrant with him. In other words, he is passing the baton. Hashem, Hashem told him, God told him that it will be Yeshua. Yeshua who will take, who will be taking them to the promised land. Moses made it clear that God himself would go before them and defeat their enemies. So Moses was encouraging the people. He informed Israel that they were about to enter the land without him and urge him to trust God's help. In other words, don't worry. It's not me. Say that. It's not me. It's God. Amen. God is with us. Amen. Amen. Trust, the Lord. trust him. Yes. Amen. In the Midrash, Rashi explains, I can go no more. Rashi claims that Moses was referring to his new limitation that he could no longer interpret the Torah as before. <laughs> Previously, Moses' face, remember, Moses' face shined when he, when, he was, uh, when he was in Mount Sinai, when he came down, his face was lit. And then he noticed that the people were, were, were seeing his glory. He didn't notice that his face was glowing and then he, he veiled himself. So there's a passage in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about the veil, Moses. It's not talking about, you know, he's, it's not talking about that the, the, the Torah or the word of God is fading. It's talking about the messenger. Moses was fading. Uh, it's time for him to pass the baton to, to, Ye to Yehoshua, to Joshua. And uh, the passage is, is really referring to the, 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 the changing of the guard. That's why I say that that is why we need a divine Messiah. Amen? Yes. The Messiah cannot just be human. You know, people say, oh, Yeshua is a good man. He, you know, he's, he's just a man. No, Yeshua cannot be just man. Say that he cannot be just man. A prisoner cannot free himself because he himself, say that he himself, it's inside the prison. Are you still here? In order for you to be set free, you need somebody from the outside. Are you still here? That's what the Messiah came. He came from above. Amen? He's divine. It's the mystery. It's the mystery that the Jewish people uh, prior to uh, prior to the 17th century, they, they in their Jewish writing, they, they, prior to the, the coming of the Messiah, they, 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 they determined based on the, the scriptures that God is talking about a divine Messiah. God himself will save them. Amen. It's still here. That's why in, in Exodus it says God himself was the one who delivered them. He didn't say Moses. So that's a the spiritual pattern because God is saying salvation can only come through God. Amen? Are you still here? So, uh, so in here, what, what, what Moses was, was uh, referring to, I can no longer come. Why? Because my time is up. And uh, Joshua will be carrying the baton. Joshua is the one who will be the one bringing them. Moses can only take you. Moses, they, they consider him the greatest prophet, and yet Moses was not able to take them to the promised land. Are you still here? So mm -hmm. go to the next slide. So that's a that's a that's a pattern. Why? Because look at this. In in the, in Deuteronomy, it says there, verse thirty-one: Be strong and be of good courage. Fear not and do not be afraid. For the Lord your God, He is the one that will go with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. Then Moses called. Yehoshua, Joshua, and said to him, in the sight of all Israel, be strong and be of good courage. You must go with these people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto his fathers to give them. You shall cause them to inherit it. So Yehoshua, say that, Yehoshua 
uh, uh, in English, we call him uh, Joshua, Joshua Hoshua, which is the formal name. The, the nickname is Yeshua. Yeshua is the one that took the children of Israel. It's a spiritual pattern because in Revelation chapter 19, what will happen? I saw a white horse. I saw heaven open and before me was a white horse. And sitting on this was the one called faithful and true. See that faithful and true. In righteousness and that he passes judgment and goes to battle. So here in Yom Kippur in the future, this is what we'll see. We're going to see the Messiah, Yeshua, his second coming. Why, how do we know he's, he's Yeshua? Because he's the word of God. Say that he's the word of God. And he's, he's the king of kings. Say that he's the king of kings. He's, king of he's the, the king. Lord of lords. Amen. Are you still here? Lord of Lord. Even, though, even though he doesn't mention it by just by the title, we know Revelation is talking about Yeshua, the Messiah. Hey, are you still here? Yes. And he will be the one who will bring the saints uh, to the Lord. Amen? Amen? And he will gather and he will protect the children of Israel. Amen? So yes. that's a spiritual pattern. That's why the Redeemer cannot just be human. He has to be divine to enable the Mashiach to shine brightly forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, go to the next slide. So like I told you last time, before God, before, before a problem, God already has an answer. Amen. He's still here. That's why it says there in Revelation chapter 13, even before the world was created. What does it say? And he that dwell upon earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Of the lamb slain, say that slain from the foundation of the earth, from the world. In other words, before he, before God even created the heavens and the earth, God already slain the Messiah. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. There was already a solution for the sin problem. God knew that sin will come. Amen. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. That's why what's interesting there, look at this word, this Hebrew word there, we call that the Hebrew word nekashi, that nekash. Nekash. Underneath Revelation chapter 13, the word nekash, it means the snake. Say that snake. Yes. Nekash, if you get the, the, the numerical value of that let the, the word, the numerical value is 358. Say that 358. And the word Messiah, say that Mashiach, Mashiach, say that Mashiach, which means Messiah. If you took the numerical value of that word Mashiach, guess what? It's 358. Can you see that? So what does that mean? So 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 remember it was the it was the nephesh, the uh, nikash, the snake that brought that made Adam and Eve fall, right? So God's saying the same nikash. Now this time the Mashiach, the, the Mashiach will now, as as the, the enemy brought death, the Mashiach will use death. Say he will use death. He will use the same. Say that he will use the same. What do you call that? The same method that brought death, that brought the problem. He will use that same method to bring it to life. Amen? Amen. That's why when death came, what did Yeshua, what, what, what did the Messiah, what Messiah did? The Messiah did. He yeah. died for us so that we can have life. Amen. Yeah. Say wow. Say wow. Wow. That's why sometimes the, the word of God it says it's a double-edged sword. Why? Because sometimes when you're going through a situation, say that when I'm going through a problem, yeah. say that I'm going through a problem. When I'm going through challenges, God will make that same problem. Say that God will make that same problem. Are you still here? That same issue, that same situation, and turn it for his glory. That's why Romans 8.28, all things, say that all things will work together for good. To them that what? Love God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Pastor, 
Pastor, uh, could you explain again about the 300 plus A plus 50 equals? Oh, yeah. So yeah. every letter, every Hebrew letter has a numerical value like Nakash, the letter Nun is 50. The letter uh, Het is eight. And the letter uh, uh, Samet or the letter, sorry, the letter Shin has a numerical value of 300. So if you add that, 358. Mashiach, go back, you see Mashiach, the letter Mem is 40. The Shin, the Shin is 300. The Yud is 10. And the uh, and the and the uh, uh, head is eight. So if you add that, how you get three hundred fifty-eight? So exactly the, the what what you think is a curse. Say that what is a curse? God can make it a blessing. Amen. Amen. Why? What do we need to do? We believe, but we need to love God. Say that, I love God. When you love God, you will follow Him. No matter what you're going through, follow God. Say that. Follow God. Follow God. And he will turn it around. Say that he will turn it around for his glory. Amen. The same remedy for the illness he will use. If 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 you were stabbed by the knife, are you telling you? If you were stabbed by the knife, God will use that same knife to heal you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that is the message. Wow. Say wow. wow. Next slide. God, it says to God, He will never fail us. Say that He will never fail us, nor yeah. will He forsake us. Mm -hmm. It says there in Deuteronomy chapter 31, God, verse 5, the Lord will deliver them up before you, and you shall go unto them according unto all the commandments which I commanded you. Be strong and be of good courage, fear not. Do not be a, don't be a, 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 a frightened by them, for the Lord your God it is He who do it who do who goes before you. He shall not fail you nor forsake you. So that's very important. Yeah. God will never fail us. His word yeah. is God. Moses is reassuring the people. He will be gone, but God will be there. He will never fail us. Yes, today you say that he will never fail us. He will never forsake us. God saved us for a purpose. God created you for a purpose. He did not just set us free so we can do whatever we want. Amen. As I said earlier. So God is saying, you know, we need to be strong. We need to be focused. We need our mind. Uh, let let not our our let not our 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 flesh dictate what will happen to our lives. Let the word of God, the word of God. Yes, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be uh, a piece of cake. But as long as we stand strong, good courage, and we trust in trust in God that will preserve us and keep us. Difficult times will come, but God is saying. Stand still. Don't quit. Never, never Amen. let anybody take Yeshua from you. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who is taking me. Amen. I can do all things. Amen. So Moses, go to the next slide. Moses writes the Torah, it says here in the Jewish writing. Moses wrote the Torah, verse 9, wrote the law and delivered it unto the priest and the sons of Levi. So this is Adar 7. Moses hears that he is about to die. So Moses miraculously, it was a mirac miraculous fashion, was able to, to, to copy 13 copies of the Torah. One for each tribe, according to the Midrash, according to the Jewish writing. And deposited one into the Holy Ark. The copy that would serve as a sacred copy. The original was there. So if there's any dispute, they would pull the original and says, okay, if somebody was to change a letter or a word, they will go back to the source and say, no, that, that, that's not what, that, what Moses wrote. Amen? So they had the, uh, the copy. And the Jewish people have been faithful. They, in fact, they, they compared uh, a thousand different Torah scrolls all over the world. And they, they match every letter, every word, and they found it to be 99.999999.9 accurate. There was just a few jot or tittle missing, but 
it was a hundred percent, almost a hundred percent kosher. In other words, they were they were faithfully copying each letter, each word, uh, each verse. So they, you know, it was amazing how the Jewish people have been faithful. So it, it, it so so what's the purpose of the Torah? If if God didn't want the Torah to be here, why why even bother? See, why even bother? Why even bother studying it? If, if, if God meant it to be done away with, why do we even have it today? Amen? It's a miracle. You know, there, there are many persecutions of Jewish people. They burn their sacred books. They burn their prayer books. And yet, the Torah remains. Amen? The word of God continues. The Bible is the most number one bestseller. Amen? Are you still here? Yeah. So, so what, what, what Moses continued hoping that the world that, that he would escape death, but no, that he would be able to to uh, to go to cross the promised land with the children of Israel. But we, we know later on that God had a better plan for him. So uh, uh, there's another comment here from um, from an ancient uh, commentator named Rabbi Monk. He says uh, that uh, from uh, Midrash Rabbah Devarim, it's the important reminder that no matter how unique we are as a human beings, as is Moses, among human beings, who can be better than Moses? Nobody was able to ascend heaven. Amen, are you still here? Yeah. Um, able to face God. And yet, say that, and yet, yeah. Moses yeah. failed. Moses died, right? That's why our redemption cannot come just by a man. Say, are you still here? Mm -hmm. We need a divine Messiah. That's why Yeshua had to come. Yeshua had to come. God himself had to come and save mankind. Amen? Amen. So even though he was occupied with such heavenly tasks as writing down the Torah, even though we see say uh, up, to the, to the, up to the time of his death, he was still doing the work of God. It's just a reminder for us that man alone cannot save himself. Are you still here? Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need the saving Messiah. So, so we have three pilgrim feasts. There's a reminder for everyone. Uh, if you're first time hearing it, there are three feasts that the Lord said, I want you to come to Jerusalem to pilgrim. So that all Jewish men, that's why in the book of Acts, remember uh, uh, Paul, Rabbi Paul, he was, he was trying to go to Jerusalem. Why? Because he was trying to go to the feast of tabernacle. Why? Because it's his obligation as a Jewish man to pilgrim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's three pilgrim feasts. The first one, of course, is is, pay, is, is uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is really Pesach. They're supposed to come before the Lord. Amen. Are you familiar? Yeah. Go to Jerusalem. The second one is Sukkot, or the Feast of uh, Pentecost. And finally is uh, Sukha, uh, sorry, uh, Shavuot, the Feast of uh, uh Pentecost, and then Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. So, in in the in the in the end of a Shemitah year, which is which is what happened in September in September twenty five and twenty seven, at the end of the Shemitah year, so Yom Kippur will happen, and then uh, Feast of Tabernacle will happen on October 9th to the sixteenth, seven days. Yeah. So on the Feast of Tabernacles, on, on the end of Ashvita year, not only are the men required, see that not only are the men, of course the women can come, but every year the men are required. 20 years or older, if you don't live in Jerusalem, if you live far, you are supposed to go to a pilgrim feast. Amen? So most of them, uh, most of them, see that most of them, they might not be able to come on Passover or Shavuot, but they make it a point to come on the Feast of Tabernacles. Why? Because that's the biggest celebration. Celebration here. Are you still here? Yeah. Now, what's interesting about when, if it's a Shemitah year, the end of a Shemitah year, and it's a Feast of Tabernacles, not only are the men, say not only are the men, the women are required now, the children, even the stranger, the, the proselyte, the converts, the slaves, 
Everyone go. Say that everyone go. Everyone. <laughs> and what happened? What happens? It's this there. Moses commanded at the end of every seven years in the solemnity of the year of release, talking about the Shemitah, on the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is to come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall chosen. This is Jerusalem. They shall read this law. So here, God is saying, there's going to be a reading of the Torah. Amen. Are you still here? Amen. Before all Israel in their hearing, gather the people together, men, women, children, the strangers that, that are within the gates, that they may hear, that they may learn, they may fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. Amen. Are you still here? Yes. So, so what happens is the Feast of Tabernacle really is the Feast of the Nations. So here the nations come. The nations come. Are you still here? Yeah. The nations come, and when they come, they will hear the king. So whoever was the sitting king at the time, he was supposed to read the Torah to the entire people there. Amen. I was here. And what I'm saying is, at the end of the millennial reign of the Messiah, on the Feast of Tabernacles, the Messiah will read the Torah to us. Amen. Are you excited? And um, why is he reading the Torah? Go next time he, when he's reading the Torah. Why? Because at the end of the seventh year, the 7,000 year reign of Messiah will happen. The next thing that will happen is there's going to be a new heaven, say that, a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw the new heaven and the new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Say that. Amen. Say, say that. It will be passed away. So Yeshua will be reading from the Torah in the beginning, Bereshit. So he's he's recreating the new world. Say that he's creating the new world, the new heavens and the new earth. And as he's as he's reading the Torah, the new heavens and the new earth is being recreated. Amen. I see him. And it says there, and I saw the first earth passed away. There was no more sea. So all that all that all that reminds us of the sin. Remember, uh, the, the flood came because of the sin. Amen? Yeah. So God is saying, I'm going to remove every reminder of the sin. Yeah. There's not going to be any more sea. Amen? Yeah. There's going to be lakes. There's not going to be sea. The, the earth will be filled with, with, with vegetation, with land. It's not going to be filled with water. Because water reminds God of the, the sin of mankind. Amen? It's still here. So he says, there's no more sea. And I, John, saw the city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. Amen. See that the tabernacle of God is with men, and he that dwells with them, and they shall be with people, and God himself will be their God. Amen. 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 Are you looking forward to that? Go to the next slide. Are you looking forward to it? And that's it. And uh, and then of course the 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 the, the, the like I said the Torah is God's love song to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. When we obey His word, say that when we obey His word, we obey His word in our life. In our life, it is as if we are singing this singing. word of God to Him. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. Why the Torah is a song. Why? Because our life is a song. Say that our, my life is a song. It's a song my of life. Is a song. Amen. Are you still here? Yeah. All right. So to, with that, I'm going to conclude today. The Torah is Yeshua, the living word. He created the universe. The same Torah will be used when the universe is recreated after the end of the millennial reign of Yeshua. Are you seeing why the Torah can never be done away with? Let us pray. Father, as we broke bread this morning, as we heard your word, that that word emanate in our spirit, in our soul, and in our bodies. May it shake us and shape us, Father. May the truth of your word coming back to you inspire us to even more. Our life is a song for you, Father. It's a song to you. May and the obedience that can only come because of the strength that Yeshua has given us, empowered us. 
may it uh, empower each and every one of us. We ask in Yeshua the Messiah. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for Amen. joining us. Our YouTube family. Uh, thank you for joining us.